Hello, everyone, and welcome, and thank you for tuning in to Health Leaders, the place for peer-sourced and solution-focused insights for healthcare executives. My name is G. Hatfield, and I'm the nursing editor for Health Leaders. Today, we are speaking with Michelle Aceto, who is the Executive Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer at Holy Name Medical Center, about how needle stick procedures interrupt care delivery. So hi, Michelle. How are you? Very well. And yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Um, So let's jump right into it. A recent poll found that 77% of patients are unaware that regardless of what conditions they might have, patients should expect no more than two needle stick attempts from one clinician. And more than half of Americans report some fear of needles. So my question for you is how do repetitive needle sticks and other uncomfortable procedures impact care delivery and the patient experience? You know, the way it impacts patient care and delivery is it increases anxiety, increases pain, and when patients are more anxious, they're less likely to understand the procedures that are being explained to them, and this has an impact on short and long term. So short term, they're not hearing about their care, about their needs, about their diagnosis, and long term, they're not hearing about the things they need to do upon discharge. So when it affects health literacy, that directly impacts potential rehospitalizations or progression of disease. Mm-hmm. And so, how do you think care? Uh, how do you think CNOs can redesign care workflows to sort of lessen this issue? What do you think needs to happen there? You know, one of the things that we've implemented, and I think it's been very helpful, is the PIVO device made by BD. And what that is, it's an IV with a tail essentially coming out of it. And it's a pill that is used for blood draws. So then the patient should expect one stick when they come into the hospital and they have the IV inserted, unless, of course, they need a special test like blood cultures, then this uh, PIVO device would be used. We encourage the, um, the nurses to use it for blood draws. And what we do oftentimes is we employ licensed practical nurses or LPNs to fill that role. This allows them to work at the top of their license while reinforcing education that has already been provided to the patient, interact with the patient, provide other needs while they're in the room, maybe dressing changes, medication administration, and it it only encourages the continuity of care. When an LPN is not available or one is not employed on that particular unit, we make sure that the phlebotomists are well-trained in using the PIVO as well so that the patient then can expect a painless blood draw when the person comes in to take the blood. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, in addition to the PIVO device, what are some of the other technologies that can provide alternatives to needle sticks? Well, really, it's a very good uh, IV care so that once you put the IV in, if you maintain it well and you choose the site properly, you can use devices that help you find the vein so that there's a decrease in the number of sticks. And you know, really just maintaining that IV so that that decreases the number of sticks. How many blood draws you get really is determined by your diagnosis and the number of tests that need to be run to, mm-hmm. to find the diagnosis or to see if the treatment is working. But I think other than the PIVO device, it's healthy IV maintenance. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I want to circle back a little bit to um, the, you know, the patient experience side of this. And mm-hmm. again, over half of Americans report some sort of fear of needles. So what training do you think um, should nurses receive to help patients feel more comfortable during needle stick procedures? I think it's really important for the nurse to always recall for themselves what it would be like or even a personal experience with having had an IV started. I think it's important to completely engage the patient, distract them, make sure that the patient is fully educated as what to expect, never to walk in and say this isn't going to hurt because a needle does hurt and it can be uncomfortable. And to make sure the patient knows that they're doing the best they can to decrease the pain for them, to locate the IV properly so it's not more than one stick, but involving the patient and having them understand what's coming, I think definitely decreases the anxiety. 
Absolutely. And to touch on that understanding piece, um, how can CNOs and other nurse leaders ensure that patients are properly educated on the procedures that they're going to receive and also the alternatives? So at Holy Name, we have a simulation center and it's really quite robust. And we include that in our uh, orientation so that we can do real time and it's always filmed, you know, procedures, including IVs. And then that is reviewed with the nurse at the end of the session to say, you know, maybe you could have included this type of education or use this positioning or talk to them about, you know, this particular story so that that would distract the patient. So I think using the simulation center is very important and involving seasoned senior nurses in our education department to make sure that nurse feels fully ready to start that IV, take control of the situation and help alleviate the anxiety for the patient. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, this is making me remember, um, you know, like getting tattoos when people will ask, like, do tattoos hurt? And it's like, yeah, you know, there are tattoos. But, um, but yeah, it's the job of the artist to kind of make sure that you, you know all the information and feel mm-hmm. safe. And it's very similar with nurses. Um, yeah. And when you start asking patients questions that you know they know the answer to, it, it's even better because then they don't have to distract and think, you know, we don't, how many children do you have? How many are married? You know, things of that nature. Those Mm -hmm. kind of things really help. Where do you live? What do you do for a living? Those are the kind of distractions that are easy answers. So the patient feels comfortable answering them. And then before you know it, you say, okay, we're all done. And and they feel better about it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also building that trust between Mm -hmm. the patient and the nurse as well. Which is why we really like to employ the LPN model, because that LPN is then administering your medications, changing your dressings, helping you with other care needs, reinforcing education, and they're going to be, you know, doing your blood draws. So that trust is really, it's deep. It, It really is a good bond. Absolutely. Yeah. So my last question for you is how do you think CNOs can help make sure that the alternatives um, like the PIVO device um, to needle sticks are available in the hospital for nurses to use? You know, when we implemented it, we made sure that it was a multidisciplinary approach. So we had our purchasing department, our senior leadership, and we had our phlebotomy department work together with BD so that they came on site, they helped us, they walked us through it. They first did an assessment of our IVs and the health of our IVs, then they rolled out the implementation. But if you don't have buy-in from your nursing staff, your phlebotomy staff, and your purchasing department, it doesn't work. So there has to be the groundwork ahead of time, how this is going to improve patient satisfaction, it's going to improve IV health, and how at the end of the day, the patient's going to have a a better stay. One of the other areas that we made sure that we included was pediatrics. So yes, adults do suffer through multiple IVs, but they're in a position to understand that, you know, this isn't pleasant, this will pass, and now we move on to the next thing. Children aren't always capable of understanding that. And so using a PIVO device on the children, according to the parents, and we've seen it, is a true game changer. Because that child now who has to have multiple sticks for you know, various diagnostic procedures or to see if things are working, you know, towards improvement of their health. Now, this one stick IV, the nurse comes in, draws the blood, or the phlebotomist comes in and draws the blood, and there it's painless because there is no stick. Absolutely. So along with, um, you know, it being a game changer for pediatrics, what are some of the other positive outcomes that y'all have seen? Well, the positive outcome is that you don't waste more resources trying to find a vein, trying to stick the patient. You know, when you walk in, no longer do you have to check this arm and check that arm and find that vein. You already have access. So it's a time saver. And and again, really the bottom line is it's better for the patient. They know when they come in and they get that PIVO device because of education from the nurse, that this is going to be the site where you get your medications, your IV fluids, and it's also where we're going to draw your blood from so that you have decreased exposure to, you know, for patients who are on blood thinners, you have decreased exposure to excessive bleeding or bruising or the opportunity for an infection. Absolutely. Yeah. It sounds like it's a positive all around. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Michelle, for your time. I'm really grateful to have had this opportunity to hear your insights and thank you so much to our audience for listening. Thank you.